the humidity in Korea is like literally like nothing else I've ever experienced before. I lived in Georgia for a year, wasn't nearly this humid. I mean, it gets really humid in Georgia. I lived in Texas for two years, and that's like dry heat, a little humid. But here in Korea, I mean, you walk out of the door of like your apartment, your house, your barracks, and you start sweating instantly, like your phone fogs up, the camera fogs up. Um, so today, me and Joel are going into Seoul. It's like our first time me going able to go off post and into the city after getting back from the field. So we're gonna try to find tacos for one, and then we're gonna try to find like a water park or a uh, hotel pool, possibly sneak into a hotel pool if we can find a really good one. Are you Snapchatting me as I do this? So here's what our trip's looking like. It's about an hour and uh, 21 minutes. So we left uh, Boson train station, is like where Camp Casey's at. And then we gotta do one transfer at Dung Mayo, go from line one to line six, and then line six takes us right into Ite One. So some people get really lucky when they get stationed here in Korea and they get like their base is right in uh, Itaewon, right in Seoul. So like you're, you're close to all these restaurants, all these bars and everything. It's like an hour and a half trip for us by train, which isn't too bad. But if you can get stationed right in Itaewon, Yangsong, it's like perfect. And then, uh, oh, ooh, yeah. Yeah, tutu and then uh, the barbecue. So I'm going between, I'll do the evil twin red ale. Yeah. Oh. So the IPA variety in Korea is not very wide, I guess. There's like two that I've really found. One is a Nisha, which I get everywhere I go. Yep, thank you. Okay, appreciate it. And Nisha, and then this one is like a, uh, I honestly don't know what this one is. It's just like not the Nisha that I usually get. But I really miss like Texas wide variety of IPAs. So for appetizer, we got the bacon and blue cheese guacamole, bunch of chips, and then you got chips on the side. Okay, so for our tacos, we got six each. I got six, Joel got six. This one right here is the chicken chimuri, which is like a grilled chicken, uh, some vegetables. Each one is like a set of two. So this is the lime shrimp right here. And then my last two are the Baja fish tacos, which is probably just like a tilapia fried tortilla. You can see like the tortillas in these are so thin. They're like literally transparent. Really good, it's like our third time being back here. So we got six tacos each. We got the guacamole, chips, salsa, and then beer. I'll go in the back. No, someone's his bags up there. Oh. Hey, cacao? Not us? Oh, no, no. What's wrong? All right. We can't go in this taxi, I don't want us. <laughs> so it wasn't until I hit the camera that we got picked up. Uh, where we're trying to go is the Grand Hyatt Hotel, which is supposed to have like, the best view of the city. It has a pool, but the pool is only access to members or guests. But we're gonna try. Oh, you can take the elevator in uh, second okay. basement. Second basement. Is there one up top too? No, is, no, no. Is there an outdoor pool? Uh, the top is uh, you can go. I can't. Yes. <laughs> I can't. Okay. <laughs> you can't go. Okay. So we're still gonna try to get to the pool somewhere, wherever it is. But you can see just how big Seoul is, and it has a really good view here. So like the city is as far as you can see and further, and then that is the Seoul Tower right there. Uh, we've been there. It's pretty awesome. But Seoul is so huge, it's hard to even like comprehend how big Seoul is. So we found the pool, but their security was spot on. And they spotted me and Joel right away. They wouldn't let us go in and they followed us. To, they let us look through the glass doors to look at the pool. The view was awesome. The pool was pretty cool. But like there was no way we could get in without being guests. So we're going to option number two, which is the Hamilton pool. So we found a pool that we're able to get into. It's called the Hamilton Hotel Pool, which is like the top overlooks uh, the city of Itaewon. It's not as nice as the previous hotel, I mean, but uh, they let us in for one. We had to pay, but it's like more of our uh, 
crowd, our age group. Like the previous hotel was a bunch of older people. This is like between probably 20 and 30 year olds. So we're gonna hang out here for a little bit, drink some beer. I can't record much because they told me no camera, so I'm just doing this really quick and I'm putting it away. The thing is though, the biggest thing I'm afraid of while being in Korea, it's called international hold. So if you get in trouble while you're on active duty with the army, uh, you get processed through the Korean judicial system and the army doesn't help you out really. So if you get in trouble with the Korean police um, or like Korean society, you get tried in their court system. So I've been trying to be like very careful with the things that I do or like film while here. Cause I don't want to get put on international hold where I'm stuck in Korea for like possibly months in years. International hold is like, would you say, would you say that international hold is the scariest thing for you in Korea? Joel completely agrees. Like, there's nothing scarier for us than international hold. Cause you're just you're stuck here until the whole judicial system is over. Thanks, man. Mike, yeah, you knew it happened And when I stepped up in here and started rapping Like at my shows, when I see their hands, they clapping Like when I'm out of the seat, chilling with Sebastian Yeah, now the phone rings, and who they calling? Cause know that when I'm stepping in, you know this dude is balling But understand, like their hands, you know they throwing up Cause you understand them Disney beats, we never growing up, yeah And if you feel them, give me beats, I kill them Alright, so we're done swimming I'm absolutely beat tired I got some sun hopefully I got a little bit of a tan I'm gonna go back to Camp Casey now that's about an hour and a half trip grab a workout I'll show you that I'm gonna try to do some max effort deadlifts tonight it's going to be a back and bicep workout but I haven't really focused on max effort deadlifts for a while so it's gonna almost be like a testing phase to see what I can get pulling from a sumo position we got a bag of these like puff pastries there's only like 3,000 won so I got these last time I was here at this train stop on the way back to uh, Casey so it's like this dough and then inside it's almost like a like a custard. happy with 585 for deadlifts um, didn't expect to go into this workout took the last month off from pretty much all or most of lifting being at the gunnery and in the field in the month prior to that I didn't deadlift at all just because we were doing a bunch of prep stuff and I just maintained like hypertrophy but I'm gonna start building um, deadlifts back into my programming routine more often once a week so short-term goal for deadlift is 650 my all-time PR is 615 and then my long-term goal is 700. But I'm really excited to like, get back to Texas and start training with iron plates again. It's just, there's a huge difference, probably mentally more than physically, of training with iron plates and like hearing it and feeling it as opposed to like rubber plates or bumper plates. I'm just not a huge fan of them. Um, so today we had off on Friday. It was like really our first day off in the past month. So we kind of just wanted to go in the city, chill out, hang out, and explore. So... That's the video guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for all the support. 
I will talk to you guys in the next video.